to the vlog, and I hate to start the vlog on a downer note, but I will tell you, something really kind of bad happened that's got me pretty freaked out with Ben and Jerry, the two-headed snake right here. You can see they're still doing completely fine and everything is good, but every now and then, both heads will kind of fight to go different directions, right? Like every now and then, they'll even go on either side of your finger and try to like push through your finger rather than realize they have to work together because they can't get around your finger. Well, regardless, I had this plant right here was way in the back right over there and the stems were kind of sticking down and sure enough, I saw Ben and Jerry kind of pushing through the stems. Ben was on one side of the stem, Jerry was on the other side of the stem and they were pushing super hard and I was like, what the heck are they doing? I've never seen them do this. You gotta remember, they've been in this habitat for gosh, a good six, seven months, right? Never seen it happen before. Well, sure enough, they seem to rip the skin a little bit between their heads. Now, it's a pretty good gash that they have there where it kind of ripped the scales. I'm definitely pretty concerned about it. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up the best I can, put some peroxide in, and then put some ointment. I talked to my vet, and they said that the ointment is the best way to go, the antibiotic ointment, and that it should be okay. I don't think it's gonna be a major issue, but it's something that I'm definitely worried about. I tell you what, I've never seen that happen before, but that just gives you an idea of the will of two different heads. I mean, even though they have the same body, they were so determined to go on either side of that stick that they literally pushed themselves to the point where they were ripping themselves apart. I mean, that is absolutely crazy. I'll keep you guys updated. And again, I'm sorry to start the vlog this way. Trust me, the rest of the vlog is gonna be upbeat and positive and we're gonna have a great day, but uh, definitely stressed out about my guys, Ben and Jerry. So I gotta be totally honest with you guys. I'm getting a little bit worried about, you know, Eric and the fact that he's always kind of, you know, eating on the job. The other day, literally, Dan, Annie came to me and she gave me a piece of footage that she shot. She was literally standing right over here and she saw Eric literally like washing the racks and like eating a taco at the same time. So she decided to video and you can clearly see that he looks, he sees me walking, I walk by him and then he sticks a taco in his mouth and then he goes back to cleaning. So I think what I'm gonna do is literally set up some cameras around the shop uh, and just kind of see what he's doing, uh, you know, kind of surveillance stuff. You know, figure out what's going on with this guy. excited to show you guys this because this is the very first ball pythons that the entire clutch hatch on the snake hatching cam 24 7 reptile live cams link in the description so uh you guys literally were able to watch these guys hatch and basically what it was is that was the clutch that we cut a handful of days ago which was a het ghost female bred to a calico male and i tell you what these are some of the nicest calicos i've ever produced i mean they are absolutely stunning i mean this little baby here has so much orange and pink in it Again, this is all going to turn white as it gets older and who doggy, I'm telling you what, that one is unbelievable. But that's not it. I mean, we got a whole bunch of them here. We got, of course, it uh, looks like we just have two little normals right here. So there's two normals here out of the entire clutch right here. Uh, now, this is a pretty low expression calico. And this is what I've usually produced, to be totally honest with you. A lot of them are like this. They have some orange and pink in them. Definitely going to get some white splotching. But nothing like this first baby here that is just unbelievable. But again, it's kind of crazy because there's two more that look absolutely as good as that first one. Oh, I take that back. There is three more that look just like that first one. I mean, I tell you what, this is an amazing clutch of eggs. So we got four super high-end calico animals. And of course, these are all possible head for ghosts because the female was a head for ghosts. And then we got one little calico, again, that wasn't like super impressive, but still a really beautiful snake. And then two normals. I tell you what, this is an unbelievably beautiful clutch of snakes. And to kind of explain, there's actually calico and then there's sugar. Oftentimes, the sugars are the ones that are like this, really high white and tons of pink and oranges babies. So these are some of the nicest calicos that I've ever had. As a matter of fact, I've said, probably the nicest calicos that I've ever produced. Uh, and this isn't the only clutch. There's actually another clutch that only had two eggs that we cut as well. But it was cool that you guys actually had a chance to watch these guys hatch. And it was really fun at the live cam when I was following the chat, which I jump on as much as I can. People were actually naming them as they came out. So it was just a lot of fun. I encourage you guys to check them out. But let's take a look at this other clutch too. And then again, this was just two eggs. And once again, this is a pretty insanely beautiful 
calico right here. It's not quite as high orange and pink as the other clutch, but it's gonna be a ripper when it gets that white in it. So this is a really good one. And then again, we just got a normal. So this was two eggs, one calico, one normal. Not too bad. Awesome that these guys hatched out. I just wanted to share it with you guys, especially the fact that we were able to watch these hatch on the live cam. So uh, there it is, ball pythons for the eggs. I think tomorrow or the next day, I'm not sure. I'll be cutting a couple really cool clutches of ball pythons, so stay tuned for that. I really haven't updated you guys on this particular thing. Lori actually kept one of the chameleons. Remember when we got all those little baby chameleons, which by the way, we have to get more so that we can have some over at the Reptarium. We actually kept one male and who, what did you name it again? I did not name it. Beth named it Raul. <laughs> Raul. So here's Raul. <laughs> and is he pretty chill? Yeah, I guess he heard you. Yeah, he's name. like, look, no, he's super cute. nice. It's, look at how big he's getting. I know. We're having a lot of fun having him in here, and I think because we're playing with him so much and taking him out, once he gets bigger, we'll move him over there and he'll be a great so, animal. Oh, okay, yeah, because we have a veiled chameleon over there now, you really can't take him out. I mean, <laughs> no, he wants to bite he's everyone, he's happy. terrible. Well, uh, Raul, so Raul is very friendly and doesn't mind coming out, and He's getting prettier by the day. Look how big his, his veil, is that his what they call veil, it? His exactly. veil is now. Yeah, he is a, he's a super nice looking animal. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now he's the shop pet over at BHB, but again, he'll eventually go over to the Reptarium. But we do have to get a bunch of babies back over the Reptarium because I loved it because we had them up front. Kids would come in, they could handle the little tiny babies. It was just so cute. And then of course we just give them away after a few months when they get bigger. So uh, we'll work on that, hopefully get them at the Reptarium soon. So this Tuesday we are going to be in Salt Lake City, Utah. We're going to be at the Sea Quest. It's going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to be myself, Lori, and Jay. We're going to hang out. We got two meet and greets. The member only meet and greet actually is sold out. But I think that there's still some room left on the second kind of general public meet and greet. I think there's only 100 slots. So you have to RSVP. Sea Quest is a pretty cool place. You can go swim with stingrays, kind of get hands on with a bunch of really cool animals. We are going to have a great time. We're going to be vlogging it, hanging out with you guys. Then we're actually heading over to Jeremy Stone's Boa Collection. We're going to see the snake keepers awesome ball like that in boa collection and then we're going to actually head out to moab to go check out the desert it's going to be an absolutely amazing trip and if you're in the salt lake city area definitely come pay us a visit tuesday night we have to do a quick feeding with the tarantulas and i know some of you guys get a little freaked out by the tarantulas and like i can't watch that brian but i am challenging you right now to hang tight just for the next like 20 30 seconds see how amazing these tarantulas are when they eat i used to be terrified of them but now i love them to death so again this is a challenge hang Hang out, check how awesome this is. species spotlight today on my girl zombie the Chilean rosehair tarantula. These guys are a Grambastola rosea and they're really probably the most common tarantula in the pet trade for pets for a number of reasons. Number one, they are unbelievably docile, not to mention just the availability of them seems to be the highest of the availability. I absolutely love my girl zombie and this is the girl that got me over my fear. Now she's 15 years old and rosehair tarantulas can typically live up to 25 years if they are a female. Of course they're insect 
craft eaters. They come from anywhere from Chile, Argentina, and Bolivia, mainly the brushlands and the deserts of those areas. And although they will wander around at night, they've also been observed to actually dig burrows and live within the burrows. And the main defense mechanism that these guys have, rather than really rearing up and striking that often, although they can do that, they're typically going to run away, but they have what they call urticating hairs. These little furry hairs are the thing, they'll kick them with their back legs and they can actually get in predators' eyes. And that's really the way they typically defend themselves. Thankfully, in captivity, animals like zombie here really never kick any fur or anything like that. So if you're ever looking for a really cool tarantula and you want one that maybe you can get over your fears with, I really suggest Chilean rosehair tarantulas because to me, they're one of the coolest animals out there. Eric, what's going on, man? Hey, what's happening? Just uh, changed a lot of bedding, keeping up with all these little baby snakes and new snakes and you know all that stuff. So good, good, good. awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. well, keep working hard. You yeah, staying on no, point with definitely. your diet? Definitely. Oh man, I've been eating real good. Have you heard? Good. good. So, all right, just you know. keep it up. All right, all right, Phil. All right, I'll catch you later. You guys know the deal. I've showed you a million times how I actually have ball trained Elvis and he completely understands that the ball equals food. Here you go Elvis. Here you go bud. Want more food? There you go buddy. And again, I've talked about this before. The fact that I can hide this blue ball, he understands that there's no food coming and I can literally pet him like nothing. I can even pet him right on the face and he understands even if I have a little bit of smell of that rodent on me, he understands that there's no food and that he's completely fine. See, I can pet his chin and everything else like this. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, when you're working with animals, sometimes you make a mistake and oftentimes when that mistake happens, it's your fault, not the animal's fault. And guess what happened yesterday? I'm not gonna lie to you is I was feeding Elvis just like I always do ball training like that and like you saw I usually come in like this I'll pet him like this I'll go under his jaw I can pet him all like this honestly my fault I went straight in like this and he thought I was food he just immediately grabbed me didn't really think about it but the fact that I only have a couple little tiny marks on me is for one reason is the fact that when he grabbed me you could see I went back with him I didn't pull away most injuries whether it's snake bites or even monitor bites or whatever happen when something bites you and you pull away and it rips the skin this guy has unbelievable teeth I mean they may not look like deep marks right there but trust me they were like right down to the bone I was stuck like a pig I was bleeding like crazy but the fact is no real harm because I went with the bite but again keeping in mind it wasn't Elvis's fault it was my fault it's always kind of our error when we get bit because we just you know we get too lazy and things happen but Elvis is an amazing animal and this just proves that even with him biting me yesterday on accident today he's completely fine oh hey Jessica I, I can get that oh, let me get that for you, you. yeah I'm gonna take it out there. <laughs> all right I tell you what, I was just looking over their surveillance footage and Eric is eating all day. He's outside, I have no idea what he's doing. When he comes up again, I'm gonna confront him. Eric, dude. What's up, man? And I, I was just looking and dude, you're like literally eating all day, like every 10 minutes. No. What are you doing? What do you mean? What the heck is wrong with you, man? Dude, I'm starving. Oh my gosh, I tell you what. I, 
I just, I give up. I don't even know what to say about this. And that concludes the Brian Barczyk vlog for the day. If you liked it, do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe. While you're at it, have an amazing day because I love your beautiful faces. Be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow. Will you leave me? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah.